EUS guided enterocolostomy for palliation of malignant distal small bowel obstruction. The patient was a 43-year-old Caucasian male with a history of metastatic poorly differentiated signet ring adenocarcinoma of the colon with metastases to the omentum and peritoneal carcinomatosis. He had an extensive surgical history including a left hemicolectomy with colostomy and colostomy reversal, cytoreductive surgery, lysis of adhesions, omentectomy, and partial small bowel resection. He also had heated intraperitoneal chemotherapy in the past. He was admitted with a recurrent small bowel obstruction. Contrast enhanced CT of the abdomen and pelvis was performed with oral as well as intravenous contrast and demonstrated dilation of the proximal duodenal and jejunal loops up to a diameter of 4 cm as demonstrated by the yellow arrow. A transition point was also identified in the proximal to mid ilium. Surgical evaluation was requested and the morbidity of surgical intervention was thought to be prohibitively high given dense intra-abdominal adhesions as well as extensive peritoneal carcinomatosis. Interventional radiology were also unable to offer viable options due to extensive peritoneal disease. Gastroenterology was then consulted to discuss potential endoscopic management options. Placement of a venting percutaneous gastrostomy or jejunostomy tube were attempted, but were unable to be placed given lack of transillumination due to extensive peritoneal carcinomatosis, as well as a midline abdominal wound from prior surgery. Endoscopic ultrasound evaluation was then performed for a potential placement of a lumen-opposing metal stent from the proximal small bowel to an area distal to the obstruction. The linear echo endoscope was advanced to the second portion of the duodenum. A segment of colon was seen in close proximity to the second portion of the duodenum. Via the rectum, a rectal tube for installation of water could not be advanced easily due to an acute angulation at the transverse sigmoid anastomosis. Therefore, colonoscopy was performed to the cecum using a pediatric colonoscope and 120 cc's of one-third strength dilute contrast was infused into the cecum to distend the cecum as well as for fluoroscopic identification. We can see the positions of the linear echo endoscope in the second portion of the duodenum, the colonoscope in the right colon, and contrast filling the right colon. As the colon was distended, the distended portion of the colon was well visualized from the second portion of the duodenum endosonographically. Once an appropriate position in the duodenum was identified, Collar Doppler was used to evaluate the walls between the duodenum and the colon for interposing vessels, and a safe window was chosen where no obvious peritoneal implants were seen. Under endosonographic guidance, the duodenal wall and colon wall were punctured using a cautery-enhanced 15mm by 10mm lumen-opposing metal stent, and the stent was deployed. After stent deployment, colonic contents could be seen in the lumen-opposing metal stent and in the duodenal lumen. A 0.035 inch by 450 centimeter straight guide wire was then advanced into the duodenum through the lumen-opposing metal stent and into the colon. The tract was dilated using a 15 millimeter balloon dilation catheter per institutional protocol to allow for immediate relief of obstruction as well as to visualize the colon. The gastroscope was then advanced from the duodenum through the lumen-opposing metal stent into the ascending colon. Dilute contrast was infused into the duodenum and fluoroscopically contrast could be seen flowing through the lumen-opposing metal stent into the right colon. The next day, the patient reported resolution of abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. An abdominal x-ray done the next day showed resolution of the small bowel obstruction and demonstrated the lumen-opposing metal stent in place demonstrated by the yellow arrow. 
A few days later, he remained symptom-free and denied significant diarrhea. He was discharged home on home hospice care and was able to tolerate oral comfort feeds. He did not present to his six-week office visit and was not readmitted to the hospital. Therefore, we presume the patient expired during this time period. In conclusion, EUS-guided enterocolostomy can be considered in similar cases where all therapeutic options, including venting gastrostomy or jejunostomy tube placement for palliative relief of malignant small bowel obstruction have been exhausted or deemed too high risk. This permanent endoscopic management option can provide lasting symptom relief in those truly at end of life with life expectancy estimated to be days to weeks.